Empirica to build the Prisoner's Dilemma experiment from scratch. I'm using Empirica version 2, which is the latest version and includes a lot of capability and stability upgrades from version 1. As we have about 30 minutes, I'm going to go through things fairly quickly. I won't be able to go into super depth on React or JavaScript syntax, but there's loads of really good resources for learning those tools out there, and you can do better than listening to me. Um, so I'll try and focus on mostly what is unique to Empirica. So this session is going to be recorded, and I'll share the code that we built after the session. Um, my hope is that by the time we're done, you'll know where to start with your own experiment. You'll get a sense for the thinking behind the design of an experiment, and this will spark some ideas for you about experiments you might want to build. Um, and even if you don't understand everything, you'll know what to learn next. Um, so the first step is actually to install Node. Um, Node is a runtime environment that lets us run JavaScript outside of a browser. Uh, and this is handy because it lets us use the same language for our server and for our participant display. I've already got it installed, so uh, let's move on. Next thing we need to do is install Empirica. We can do this in the terminal window with a command that we'll take from the Empirica website. All this command does is download the Empirica installer and run it. And I'll have to put in my password. Great. Now I'm going to ask Empirica to set up a template experiment. And in this demo, we're going to create uh, the Prisoner's Dilemma game. So we will say Empirica create and then give it the title for our experiment. And this command is going to create a folder for our project and populate it with a skeleton of code that we'll modify to implement our own experiment. So now that's done, we'll cd into our experiment. And we'll type Empirica to start the server and just double check that everything's installed properly. So now that that's running, I can uh, open my browser window and in the browser window go to localhost 3000. 3000 here is the port number that your computer uses to connect to the browser. Um, we don't really need to know anything about that other than how to use it. So when we open this window, we see that there's a message that there are no experiments available, which makes sense because we haven't launched any yet. Because we're in development mode, there is a link to the admin console. And if I click through here, we'll be able to start a new game. So in this window, we have the con a view that shows us the currently running batches of games, and right now there are none. Um, and this will show us how many games we have currently running and their status. And here in the left-hand panel, we can see um, a variety of different views for uh, the number of players who are currently connected, the treatments that we're going to use to uh, design our games. So we currently have defined a solo game and a two-player game in the treatment uh, in the, uh, the template file that Empirica gives us when we install it. And then we have some tabs for uh, some of the other controls. So let's create a new uh, treatment configuration for our experiment uh, right here. First, what we'll do is we'll go back to batches and create a new batch. And we're going to, in this case, create a two-player treatment. And then if I say create, this will use the default lobby configuration. We'll just create one game. And uh, we'll go ahead and press start. So now if I go back to my experiment, what I see is first the consent. I do agree to participate. And then I can put in my name or my mturk ID, uh, whatever it is that the uh, experimenters are going to use to pay me. And then we go into an intersection. So this is asynchronous, and players complete the intersection on their own. And it's a great place for consent and instructions um, and all the things you want a, a player to, to know before they enter the game. Um, so when everyone's ready, they'll enter the game. We only have one player here out of a two-player game, so let's create another one. Um, while we're in development mode, we have access to this handy little button, which lets us create a new player. And that pops up in another tab. I'll just move it up here. Um, James 2 will be the name for here. And then once all the players are ready, we come into the game. This part is synchronous, uh, and all players advance through all the stages of the game at the same time, either when the timer elapses or when they've finished with a particular stage and submitted it. Um, so within each game, you can have multiple rounds, and with each round, you can have multiple stages. And so this uh, demo experiment has uh, two rounds of different games, and this first one has two different stages. So if I 
submit my guess as to the number of jelly beans. Uh, and it'll say waiting for the other players. And when both players have submitted, it'll advance to another stage which shows what you guessed and what the other person guessed. And then when I submit again, we'll move on to the next round. And here the game is a Minesweeper game. And what you'll notice is that uh, this Minesweeper game is, is synchronized between the two players, so they can play the same game and collaborate on the same game together. And, um, and this works over, over the server, so you can have one person in, in, uh, in San Francisco playing Minesweeper at the same time as somebody else in Boston is playing uh, the same game. So let's submit this and just say we're done. After the game is finished, uh, players go to exit steps where they can complete surveys or get payment instructions, or we can debrief them on the purpose of the experiment and what we learned from them. So now let's look at the code that makes this experiment run. Just uh, open this current window and say code dot. So this will open Visual Studio Code for me. Um, see if I can put that on the right side. Perfect. So this template experiment ships with a number of different folders. And most of the files, files that we'll see here are boilerplate. Um, they're for advanced users. And we'll only look at about five of these files today. The server folder is where all the code that runs on your experiment server will live. The client is where the code that runs on your, um, on your participant's browser will live. And then this .empirica folder is going to store data and configuration files that we need to run the experiment. So let's go into the code that shows the Jelly Beans example to the participants. So this is under Client, Source, Examples, Jelly Beans. And what you'll see here is a React component. We're using the React, framen React framework in Empirica. Uh, and React is just a bunch of functions that return HTML. And this lets us build up our display in bite-sized chunks that we can compose together to make a whole page. So in this file, we can see a few things. First, we're exporting a function, which we'll call, which is a, a React component, and the component will keep track of its own state. So there's a few hooks here, uh, and then there's a few functions that are going to be used in this component to handle the life cycle of that component. Uh, and then down here we have a function where um, we return what is actually displayed, and this is going to use some of the things we've defined further up. Now let's look at the same code that runs in this experiment, but it's going to be running on the server. So in the server source callbacks function file, uh, we have a set of functions that happen, that get called uh, the different events in the life cycle of an experiment. Uh, so this top function here, on game start, um, is going to be a place where we can set up all the things that need to happen uh, when a game is launched. And in this case, we're setting up the rounds and the stages for the game. Uh, and down here we have a function that's going to compute the score after people guess the score for the jelly beans. So for this demo, we'll clean out the code for the jelly bean and the minesweeper example and just leave the scaffolding. So first we can get rid of these scoring functions here, and then the call to that scoring function, and we'll also get rid of uh, the definitions of the rounds and stages. When I save this, my um, uh, VS Code's formatting the file for me in a nice way. Next thing we'll do is we'll go and we'll just delete these files for the examples. We're not going to need those. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, edit the stage file. And this is where uh, the, the components for the jelly beans and Minesweeper example are, are displayed as part of the larger experiment. Um, and that connect what we defined as the stages with the, uh, the components that are being displayed. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to restart our Empirica server so that the changes that we made on the um, on the server side get propagated. And come back to no experiments available here. And we'll restart the server and go back and create another two-player game. Great. And now we can enter the game again. Alright, so the first thing we're going to 
do as we're, we're building up our new experiment is we're going to update the intro text to say what the player is going to be expected to do. And this intro text is living under source intro exit at the moment. And what you'll see here is basically just some HTML syntax wrapped inside of a function. And so we'll just uh, modify that uh, HTML syntax so that it says what we want it to say. So here I'm using standard paragraph tags with a few styling pieces. And when I save this, you'll notice that those changes are propagated immediately to the experiment. Um, so we're using hot reloading here to make sure that uh, we can debug quickly and, and design our experiment quickly. So now we'll create the React components for each of the two stages that participants are going to see. Uh, to do this, I'm going to create a new folder and just call it stages. You can call it anything you like. And inside this folder, I'm going to create some new files. So the first one will be called choice. JSX, and inside this function I'm just going to put in a, a, a boilerplate piece of code which just returns a function called choice and says um, that this isn't yet implemented, and we'll save that. And then I'm going to do the same for a component called result. And it'll get some boilerplate text as well. We'll save that. Next thing we need to do is to add a round and some stages to that on game start callback that we looked at earlier so that we can actually make these components show up. So we'll go back to callbacks.js and inside this on game start callback we will add a round. And the syntax for this is all in the Imperica documentation, but basically we say we've gotten this game object from the callback uh, parameters and we're going to add a round. And for now we'll just call that round round. And this round is going to get two stages. So the first stage is going to be a choice stage, and then the second stage is going to be a result stage to mirror the instructions that we're giving to the participants. And we'll save this. So now we've told Empirica what these stages will be, and we've defined the outlines of the components that are going to display during those stages. We need to connect them up to one another. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is determine what stage we're in. And so we'll do this back in the stage file here. Um, now, we're going to use a hook that gets access to Empirica's internals. And these hooks are things that Empirica provides that will give us access to a player object, the game object, the round, and several other objects. And so if we want to, um, to use a use stage hook, this will give us the stage object. So I'll just add that to our list of imports. And then I can get that stage here. So use stage is just a function that returns an object, and that object has uh, methods and attributes that are specific to the particular stage that the experiment is going to be in uh, when the participant gets there. Um, and so because we have the stage object, we will um, uh, add in a, a, new, a new switch statement, which will say what we should do given the, the stage that we're in. So we're going to say once we get the stage name, if the stage name is choice, then we're going to return something, and if the stage name is result, we're going to return something else. So now we need to connect those two components and uh, display them in the right places. So first we'll import them with some import statements. This is all relative paths. Uh, so import choice from this stages.choice file and, and so forth. And then we'll actually add these components in as the return objects from this function. So here we'll return choice. Uh, and here we'll return result. Now these are um, just JSX syntax that calls a function. So you might in other places see this look something like choice with the open close parenthesis. It's just a call to a function. Um, but putting it in these tags allows us to add uh, options that look a lot like what we'll see with HTML. Um, and then again at this point we'll restart our server and make sure that the changes we've made get propagated to the, uh, the server. And we only have to do this when we're making server-side changes. Um, and my, my understanding is that we're, we're, the Empirica dev team is working on ways to make sure that we don't actually have to restart the server every time we make changes to the callbacks. Um, all right. Now what we want to do is um, set up a view. Uh, uh, and to, OK, yeah. Next thing we need to do is create a two-player game. So we'll go back to admin. We'll create a new batch. We'll go to two players, and we'll say create. Great. Go back to our experiment, and log through. 
James 2. Great. Go through the intro steps and we'll get loaded into a game. And now we see that this is the, the choice component that we, we put in boilerplate text for, but we haven't put any actual uh, details in there yet. So the first thing we want to do in this choice component is we want to basically tell the participants what we expect them to do. Um, so here I'm going to use standard HTML tags for an unordered list to format some text. And to save you from watching me type, I've pre-formatted that. And I'll just paste it in. Uh, and I'll put some emojis in there for good measure. So now we see these changes uh, propagated to the display. So you and your partner in crime have been arrested. This is the prisoner's dilemma. If you both keep silent, you'll both get two months in jail. If you testify and your partner uh, against your partner and he keeps silent, you're free. If you keep silent but your partner testifies, you get 12 months in jail. And if you both testify, you both get six months in jail. So what do you do? So now we need to uh, add some code to let the participants actually make that choice. And we're going to give them a couple buttons to press. Uh, so Empirica ships with a component which is a, a, a wrapper around the, the HTML button component and provides some nice features for us. So we'll use that and we'll put our buttons in here right at the bottom of the page on top of the div. Okay, so we got those two there. Um, I'm going to use some inline classes uh, built from the Windy framework to, to uh, style this. So we'll put it, the buttons in their own div here. Uh, with some styling, we'll say um, we want them to be width small, and we're going to justify the center, and we'll put them in a flex box. And then take that closing tag for the div and put it where it needs to be. And then we're also going to add uh, some margin to those buttons. So I can paste this in here uh, like that. And if you have questions about how Windy or this is real similar to Tailwind works, um, we can send you some resources after the, the demo today. So when I click these buttons, let's save this and, and look at that formatting. When I say click these buttons, nothing really happens. And that's because we haven't put any, any handlers onto these buttons to tell it what to do when they're clicked. Um, so first I'll, I'll create a function, which is what will be called when the buttons are clicked. I'll put that up here at the top. Um, and then I need to connect that function to, to the buttons. Uh, so this button object takes an argument, which is called handle click and that handle click takes a function and so here I'll use an inline function which calls this on click function we uh, specified before um, and uh, and calls it with the argument silent and we'll do the same thing for the uh, testify button here and um, just to give us something to do with this we'll we'll go ahead and log the um, the choice that participants make so here what we're using is the browser console, and you can access this in Chrome. Uh, go up to the three little dots, more tools, uh, developer tools here. And then if I look for the uh, JavaScript console here, I can see all of the logging messages that uh, Empirica, Empirica or, or anything else that is running in the browser puts out. Um, so if I click testify button, I get my, my error message here. So the last step for this component is to save the values. Um, the value is unique to the player and to the round, and we may want to have multiple rounds in the future. So we'll save the value under player.round, um, and I'll, I'll show you what that means. So we're going to use a use player hook to get access to the player object. So first thing we need to do is import that hook, and then we'll, we'll use the hook to get a, an object for the player. We have to do that at the top of our function. And then what I can do is, is in this callback, I can set to the player.round object what the decision of that player is. So we'll put that right here. Okay. And so now what happened is when this function is called, the player object has a, a round object, which is the um, player specific round that they're currently in. And we'll set a, a, a key of decision with the value of the choice. And the last thing we need to do when a player clicks this button is we need to tell Empirica that they're done with the stage and they're ready to move on to the next stage. And so the syntax for this is to set to the uh, player.stage object uh, that submit is equal to true. This says the player has submitted the stage. So when I save this and return to the browser window, I don't think we need that anymore, uh, when I click 
of the button, it logs that to the player object, uh, saves that to the player object, and moves on to the next stage. So now it's displaying for us the result component, which we have yet to implement. Uh, so let's build that up right now. And this is going to display for us the choice that each person made and the reward that they got for making those choices. And as before, we want to use the use player hook to get access to the player object and figure out what those choices were. So I'll import that and, um, and get access to the player object. And there's also actually a hook that will get us access to not just the current player, but all of the players in the game. And this is the use players hook. And just as before, I can uh, get an object for those players. But the thing is, I don't actually want a list of all the players. What I really want is to know what my opponent thinks. And so I want to get an object from my opponent as well. And so what I'll say is, take this list of all the players and filter it so that I get, for each player, uh, take any player, so this will uh, evaluate to true when it finds a player whose ID does not equal the ID of a current player. So this will give us a list of all the players except for the current player, and that should be a list of length 1, and so we'll just take the, the first element of that. And now we want to display those values. We're going to keep this div and give ourselves some space, and we'll use a, a couple paragraph tags to display this result. So we'll say, uh, you chose x, your partner chose y, and you get z months in jail. Now we just need to fill in those values. And to do this, we'll use JavaScript sin, uh, string templates, um, and we'll get the values that we've set to the player.round object in the previous stage. So here for the player, I can say, uh, fill in this string with the template value player.round, and then I'll get the decision that we set in the last round. And we can do the same thing for the opponent who also has a round and a decision. And here I'm using these uh, trailing question mark uh, syntax so that if the opponent object or the round object is not found for some reason, instead of throwing an error, this will just de default to, to undefined. And lastly, we want to get a score for the player, uh, which is uh, where we'll store the computed months in jail. But we haven't defined this yet. So when we enter uh, this value, we'll just say, um, Copy this in here. You get player.round.get score months in jail. And if I save this, you'll see that that defaults to undefined because we haven't um, uh, we haven't we haven't defined that yet. We haven't computed the score. Last thing we'll do in this component is we'll add a button to continue. So I'll import the button component again here and uh, add a button at the bottom, and we'll just call this button continue inside my div there. And um, we need to, to define a function for the, hand, the click handler that will move on to the next stage. Um, and because this only needs to do one thing, uh, which is move on, we'll just add that with an inline function here. So this says, here's a function taking no arguments. And when it's called, uh, set submit on the player.stage object to true. I'll save this. And now when I click this continue button, we move on to the exit steps. So now we need to compute the score. And it's going to be easiest to do this on the server side so that we can make sure that it's ready for the display stage. And we need to make sure we only compute it once. Um, so one place we can do this is the onStage ended callback in the callbacks file, which is right here. We'll give ourselves a bit of space. And this callback is going to run after every stage. So let's make sure that we only compute the scores at the end of choice stages. So what we'll do is we'll put a little guard clause here at the top that says if the stage name is not choice, then just return and don't compute any scores. Now on the server, we don't have access to the hooks that we used on the front end, uh, but we can get the players from the stage object that's provided in the callback. Um, so here I have the stage object provided to this callback, and I can say uh, players is stage.currentgame.players. And now we want to loop through all of the players to compute their scores. So I'll define a for loop here, give ourselves some space. Um, and as before, we can get the opponent by filtering the players for uh, to not include the current player. So I'm, I've got a current player in my for loop, and I've got all the players in this list, so I'll just filter out those and take the first one. And 
we can get the choices that the player and their opponent made from the player.round object as we did before. Um, and in this case I'll define them to their own variables because uh, we're going to use them in more than one place. Now to compute the score um, we just look at the table of payoffs that we showed the participants and I'll formalize that as a set of if-then statements. So first I, I define a variable for the score, it's going to hold the score, and then if the player's choice is to testify and their opponent's is also to testify, they get six months. If it's testify silent, then they get zero months. If it's silent testify, they get 12, and in any other case, they get two. And finally, we want to set this to the player.round object. So I will set this here at the bottom. And we'll save this. Save this file. And restart our server here. And then we can launch a new game. We'll do this with two players. And we'll walk on through it. What is going on? Loading the game. Okay, let's do a quick uh, debug here and see what's going on. Looks like we got a little bug, so I'm going to just try restarting the server. Close that out. Get that going again. And create a new patch. Two-player game. And we'll start that patch. There we go. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here, uh, James 2, walk through the game, and we can walk through here and just make sure that our score was computed properly. There we go. Six months in jail for both of them and continue to the exit steps. Now we want to make this one-shot prisoner's dilemma game into a repeated prisoner's dilemma game. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll set a parameter to tell Empirica how many rounds are going to be in the game. And we'll do this in treatments.yaml. And so I was telling you earlier about this .empirica folder which includes all of the things that uh, will be used for config or for data storage for our experiment. So we'll enter treatments.yaml here and we'll define a one-shot game, a two-round game, and a ten-round game. So to do this, we'll just define first a new factor. So these factors are different decision points that you make in defining a, an experiment. Um, and you know, because we know that the prisoner's dilemma can only have uh, two players, we'll just get rid of some of these extra values. And then we'll need to create uh, a treatment that will will hold our, our long game here. Um, so we'll call this a two-player long game. And this uh, this game is going to have a name two players long, and it's going to have ten rounds, two players. Um, so let's also add some rounds to this other uh, game we have here. That'll be our short game. So we'll say this is now rounds one, and then we'll get rid of this solo condition, which doesn't make sense uh, in the prisoner's dilemma, at least in a world with the Fifth Amendment. Uh, okay, so now what we'll see, actually, if we go back to the admin console, is that those changes that I made to this treatment file, if I refresh the page, uh, will show up here. So I've got a two-player game and a two-player long game, and I've got those two factors for the player count and the number of rounds. So now we need to tell Empirica to take the value of num rounds and create that many rounds in the game. And the factors that we've specified are going to be available in the game object uh, under the uh, treatment object. So I'll use this in callbacks. And at the beginning of my on game start callback, first thing I'll do is I'll get the treatment condition. And from that treatment condition, I can get the number of rounds. So here I'm just using a, a JavaScript object destructuring which is a pretty standard JavaScript pattern, although it was new to me when I started. Um, and we'll put our round creation inside of a for loop. So let's say here is 
um, for uh, each value a, between 0 and the number of treatment rounds, then we will um, add a round. And this round will have the same number of stages, but we'll just uh, put in a little um, code here to say what, what number the round is. Uh, and because JavaScript is zero-based, I will add one to that so it says round one on the first round the player sees. I'll save this again. And because this is a multi-round game, we can actually define a cumulative score in our score function. Um, so cumulative score uh, conventionally is stored under player player score. Um, so I can get the, the player's current cumulative score by saying player dot get score. And if this is undefined, then I'll set a value of zero. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is, is take that value and add to it the score we computed for the current round and set it to the score object again. So now this same thing we got will be updated with its value plus the current score. And there's one more change we want to make which is to say um, to the players that after they've seen their results they have the option to play again. So instead of having them continue to the exit steps we'll just say play again. And I'll save this as well. And we'll go and quick restart our server. And pull up the admin console. Get ourselves a new batch. And this time we'll select the two players long treatment. Create the batch and start it. And then we'll enter into the game. walk through the intro stages, come into the game, make our choices, and see the score computed for this particular round. And we can also see the score, the cumulative score, up here in the, um, the profile. Let's play again. And it turns out they keep making the same choices. It's just uh, not particularly strategic of these two prisoners. Perhaps one of them is always uh, more reputable than the other. At this point, our experiment's basically done. We just need to wrap it up and stick it on a server. So I'm not going to go into the details of setting up a server today. Um, the Empirica docs have some instructions for bundling the code and moving it to a server and serving that to users. Uh, <coughs> so here's a page where you can see that. And this will walk you through bundling. It's a fairly simple command, Empirica bundle, um, moving things to your server, and then uh, serving the experiment. And from there, it's basically a matter of passing a link along to your participants and starting the game at the right point. So thank you for walking through the experiment creation with me. I hope you'll get a chance to try it out. Don't worry too much if that felt like a lot of code. Uh, when I started using Empirica, this would have taken me a lot longer. Um, and I'm sorry we didn't have time to get into more detail. We tend to find that most people who get started with a little knowledge of programming, even if they haven't used React or JavaScript before, will be able to get a basic experiment running in a week or two. Um, and there's a growing community of developers who have experience with Empirica and are very friendly. Um, and several of my students have been able to take what they know about Empirica and to help other researchers get started with their process.